there's a march going on right now called Undrone Upstate, and it's been organized by the Upstate Anti-Drone Coalition uh, and the Syracuse Peace Council. Um, they left Hancock Field uh, yesterday in Syracuse and will be walking uh, to the Niagara Falls Air Force Base in, in Niagara Falls, um, hoping to get there, planning to get there October tw 21st. It's a long walk. Um, they are uh, some really committed peace activists. Um, and the purpose of the march, or the walk, really is to try to raise people's awareness of the fact that we have killer drone control centers right here in upstate New York, uh, that, that in fact upstate New York has become uh, a war zone. Um, because in, in two locations, Hancock Air National Guard Base and Niagara Falls Air Force Base, uh, they have set up drone control centers where people on the ground are piloting and making the kill, uh, pushing the kill button for MQ-9 Reaper drones uh, armed with Hellfire missiles and 500-pound bombs that, as we speak, uh, for instance, Hancock Air National Guard Base is maintaining a 24-7 presence in Afghanistan, maybe, maybe executing people as we speak. And, uh, and because of that, upstate New York really is a legitimate war zone because these are armed or uniformed military personnel killing people in a combat zone. Um, if Syracuse was bombed by people from Afghanistan, by, by the Taliban, uh, that wouldn't be an act of terrorism under international law because they would be attacking armed combatants uh, in, in a war. And, and I'm not sure that the people of upstate New York are aware of the extent to which uh, our region has become militarized and is not only supplying uh, weapons for the war, but, but that the war is actually being conducted from Syracuse and now Niagara Falls is opening up uh, a similar drone control center. Now the drone, um, people will say, well, you know, the drones make it so that we don't have to send troops. Um, what do you say to people like that? Well. Several things. Um, as, as my friend Ed Canan has famously said, drones are tactically smart but strategically stupid. Um, in the short term, it looks like drones are a great deal for, for America because we don't have to risk uh, American troops uh, directly. We can, we can kill uh, apparently without, with impunity, without risking American lives. Um, but in, in the long run, um, drones have been shown to breed terrorism and chaos. Um, our, even our news media has covered a little bit some of the chaos into which Yemen has descended, um, pretty much as a direct result of years of U.S. drone strikes that, that have uh, undermined the order in the country uh, has led to civil war and now has led to Saudi Arabia basically imitating the United States and deciding it can just bomb a country at will. Um, the, the whole U.S. policy, including, uh, including drone strikes, I think has just um, created even more chaos in the Middle East and now you have Russia deciding it can bomb another country at will. Um, unfortunately, other countries are following uh, the precedent of the United States and our claim that we can bomb either by airplanes or by drones any country that we want to. Um, and that's not leading to a more peaceful world or a more peaceful Middle East. So um, is, are the drones being used only in the Middle East? As f 
that's a complex question. Um, officially, um, what Hancock Air National Guard bases said is that the, their drones are only being used in Afghanistan. We have two organizations that are operating the drones, really. The military, who are, we are told, are only using the drones in combat zones or war zones. Um, and the CIA is operating drones in a variety of places, um, killing people in, in Somalia, in, uh, in Yemen, in Pakistan, as well as in Syria and, and Iraq and uh, Afghanistan. Um, so we're not, we're not totally sure whether they truly abide by that, those distinctions, um, but there are numerous, numerous countries where we've been using drones. Now, drones are, um, uh, is this drones being used like how they had Blackwater go in to Iraq? Are private contractors also using drones? And is this technology being given out to corporations freely like that our weapons were being given to Blackwater and other um, other mercenary right. corporations? Well, my, un my understanding is that um, there are mercenary corporations like Blackwater, Z, whatever their name is nowadays, um, that are on the ground handling the, the launching of the drones. Um, the actual long-term flying and, and the kill decisions are made by the military and, and the CIA. So it's, as far as I know, uh, Blackwater operatives are not actually flying the, the drones except to get them off the ground and to land them. And I know one of the things that people are also concerned does is that already we've had um, citizens of the United States killed by drones. And the fact that police have been given military weapons to um, to uh, watch, observe, uh, infiltrate, um, surveil the the public. Uh, what are their concerns about that being used on uh, more citizens of the United States and those that um, I mean, a 16-year-old can't be a you know is, shouldn't have been a military target. Uh, and there was no due process, but is there the, the idea that this is going to expand to uh, the United States and um, take out people who the government thinks shouldn't be around? Well, I mean, that's, that's already happened. We've had, in, in other countries, we've had about half a dozen American citizens who have been executed with no due process. Um, and at least one of them, uh, Abdul Rahman Al Alaki, the the 16-year-old son of Anwar Al Alaki, uh, was executed um, with with no justification that that we can think of. He would um, sometimes I've heard U.S. representatives say he was killed in the same strike that killed his father, uh, but that's simply not true. Uh, he was killed a month later, um, and the, the White House, as far as I know, has still not never given any reason why. Um, so we, we do have that problem. Um, there is at least one police department which I believe has now received permission to uh, operate armed drones, although they say they're, they're not lethal arms so far. Um, so I, I don't think that lethally armed drones uh, are operating in the United States today, um, but seeing the expansion of the uses of drones, uh, I, I would not be surprised. I think it's certainly something to worry about. Now, the reason I, I've asked you these questions is um, to kind of talk about why people should um, take interest in this march and that. Um, how did um, do you know how the uh, New York, upstate New York, became uh, 
conceptualized in the drone war and why how that came about or why well sure um the upstate coalition um really uh, was first organized about six or seven years ago uh, bringing peace activists together from Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, Ithaca, Binghamton, Albany, um, and I probably left a few cities out. Um, originally we were focused on Fort Drum and there was a march from various points in New York uh, to Fort Drum. Um, when about six years ago the uh, Hancock Air National Guard Base was given the drone mission and, and um, it is the location for the 174th Attack Wing, um, which, which says a lot right there. Um, even, even the language that they're using, the Attack Wing, Hellfire Missiles, Predator and Reaper Drones, um, gives you the idea that there's not good intent here. Um, but when Syracuse became uh, the center for an actual drone control center, I believe it was the second military drone control center after Creech Air Force Base out near Las Vegas, um, we really came to focus on that. Um, again, realizing that in some senses the drones are the tip of the iceberg of U.S. military policy, um, exemplified so much recently by the horrendous bombing of the Doctors Without Borders hospital and the, the killing of 22 people, including three children, um, in a hospital that was clearly marked, that had been they had been calling in their GPS location to the U.S. military for the four years that they were there. Um, you know, the idea of calling this, blithely calling this an accident, and you know when the when the White House spokesman is on there saying saying how proudly well we acknowledge when we make a mistake and we're really virtuous when we kill people accidentally, um, it just the utter lack of of compassion of repentance for for the horrible killings that we're doing and 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 the you know the fact that by the Geneva Conventions that was a war crime. And it should be treated as such. I think there's a good reason that Doctors Without Borders is is calling for an independent investigation because we know the history of the Pentagon investigating itself. Um, I'm sorry, I got a little sidetracked there, but I, I do want to make the point that the drones are one part of the larger U.S. policy. At the same time, they raise tremendous problems. They blur the distinction between war and peace. Um, they in increase the likelihood that the president will order drone strikes in countries with which we're not at war, which has already happened, because the cost is so little. Um, you're not risking, he's not risking American lives. Um, the drones are expensive, but not that expensive. And perhaps most importantly, politically, it's not very costly, because if a drone gets shot down, or if the mission goes awry, um, the president may not even have to ever acknowledge that it happened. Whereas if American servicemen, people's lives are lost, they would have to acknowledge that. And, and that just raises the, the likelihood that, that we'll be getting involved in another war. Another, another problem is that drones are not rocket science. Um, it, it's relatively easy even for non-state actors to develop lethal drones. And, you know, do we really want to bequeath a world to our children where, where killer drones may be flying all over the place. What, what happens when another country or a group decides that an American politician <clears throat> is a terrorist and decides to take action on their own following exactly the legal precedent that the United States has set? Is that really the kind of world that we want that we want to leave to our children. I, I don't think so. And it seems that, uh, um, well, since World War II, we haven't had a war that was actually declared. But we haven't had, um, actually, I think the only president that was not involved in a war was Carter. Um, but um, 
but it just seems that um, there's less and less oversight by, you know, Congress is not doing their job, so that, and they're supposed to be representing the people, so that the power is going more and more into the executive branch to decide what is our enemy and what is our not. I, th I think that that's, that's very true. Um, you know, President Obama's Kill Tuesdays when they, when they decide who their targets will be for the week, I think is a very frightening development. Um, you know, and for me, the, the frightening thing is that, that this has, this program has gone on and increased regardless of whether it's a Republican or a Democratic president. It's, I, I'm afraid, you know, going, going to the polls and voting is not going to solve this issue because we don't have uh, a major party candidate who's willing to take on the drone program. Uh, you know, and, and we need, therefore, to be taking action in the street, to be doing things like this, this peace walk. Have, have the politicians or uh, government officials of New York uh, had anything um, to say about this, or have they pretty much been silent, or have they advocated for it to be coming to New York because they know that money also comes with it? Well, I know some of our Congress people have, have advocated. Senator Schumer is a uh, is a major advocate of drones. I've uh, I've had brief discussions with him a couple of times about about that at Nazareth's graduation um, and, and he uh, and, and let him know that not all of his constituents are in agreement with his positions. Um, so that you know the state governments cannot keep this out it's really federal or could they be involved in this? Should well, people, could people get involved and talk, talk to their state representatives and um, senators and assemblymen and say, you know, this is something we don't want. Well, I think... Um, I, you might not know this. On, on some levels, it, it, I think it's a different situation with the Niagara Falls, which is an Air Force base, and so there's very little state control. Uh, Hancock Air National Guard Base has a very strange mixture of state and federal control. It's a federal mission, but technically the Air National Guard is a New York State operation and um, we, we have tried to figure out exactly who's in control of what on that base and we're not sure um, you know I, I think uh, I, I think that it's worthwhile bringing the issue up to state and local uh, executives I think you know and you know in some ways uh, many of us, in the upstate drone coalition have tried to do that by doing civil resistance or civil disobedience at at the gates of, of Hancock. I mean uh, we've had close to a hundred arrests so far and I, th I think that's really brought the attention of the town of DeWitt where it's located to what's going on at that Air Force Base. Um, speaking of the arrests, um, has it, it's they had a, the commander on the base actually had a um, order of protection. Is that something that, uh, I've never heard of that before. Is that something new to try to keep protesters away that one person on a base that's not even right there can get an order of protection? And isn't that what, um, one of the things that people were getting arrested for besides protesting? Well, people, we've tried, we've really tried to focus on the issue of the drones, but, but yeah, we have been pretty outraged. I've had uh, an order of protection on me for two years. Um, I believe it has lapsed now because they didn't renew it. I, I, I've been awaiting trial for an action that I did in April of 2013, so it's been two and a half years. Um, I had an order of protection against me for, for two of those years um, to keep me from going on the base. Um, and to me and, and to really all of my colleagues, it, it seems like a real insult um, 
to the whole idea of order protection, a whole an insult to the women's movement. Um, orders of protection, I think, are very important tools that have been used to protect vulnerable women and children and, and men as well at times, but to protect the uh, to protect a military officer who has some of the most powerful weapons going at his control from nonviolent protesters, including uh, grandmothers in their 80s, um, and, and to have one grandmother in her 60s uh, sentenced to one year in prison for violating that order of protection it is, is really, uh, I think, an insult. I, I have found out a, a little bit about this. Um, these are a second type of order of protection which are apparently being very frequently used against all kinds of crimes that have nothing to do with domestic violence. Things like people can get orders of protection for shoplifting. Um, and there are, as near as I can tell, there are no statistics being kept. Judges don't have to record how often they use orders of protection. So in some, way, in some ways, what we're experiencing is the tip of the iceberg and perhaps the first time that it's been used um, on a fair number of white middle class people. Um, so they are walking from Hancock to Niagara Falls. Um, what in Rochester is going to be happening? And um, well, let's start there. Okay. Well, they, the marchers are planning to leave Palmyra about 8 o'clock Tuesday morning, October 13th. I uh, should be arriving at Nazareth sometime in the afternoon. Um, there will be a panel at 7 o'clock uh, Tuesday night at Nazareth um, in the Forum, in, uh, in the Schultz Center, uh, where we will be trying to bring together three issues, the drones, Black Lives Matter, and the current refugee crisis in Europe and ask the question, what do these have in common? Uh, should we think about these as totally isolated issues or are there common roots to all of those? And, and, and should people who are concerned about one really be thinking about, about all of them? And, and so I will be on that panel, which should discourage anybody from who's <laughs> listening to this from coming. Uh, and Yakub Shabazz, who's been a community organizer in Ithaca and is a, currently a student at Nazareth College, and Russell Brown, who's a Vietnam veteran and one of the key organizers of the upsta the Undrone Upstate March. Okay, and they will be marching to Nazareth College, and then from Nazareth? Okay, from Nazareth, the, the next morning they will march to downtown Rochester, and there will be a a movie being shown at the Flying Squirrel on Clarissa Street at 7 o'clock Wednesday. Uh, the, it's a new movie that's just come out about drones called Good Kill. Um, I haven't seen it, but Judy Bellow assures me that it's excellent. And for those people who want to get involved, um, whether it be walking, whether it be helping with supplies, whether, you know, I mean, you don't you're not saying that people have to walk the whole way. Right, people are welcome to join at, at any point. There are uh, a couple of websites, I don't have them memorized, that, we'll put, that we'll people could, uh, could go to to get more information, or people are always welcome to uh, give me a call or email me uh, at hmurray9 at naz.edu if you want more information. Okay, and um, tell me um, one more thing about um, the connection of um, you know in Rochester we have one of the um, well no I guess I'm okay anything else that we should know about anything else oh. Just, just that I've, I've known a lot of the marchers for, for many years. Some of them have spent some time in Afghanistan, have talked to, to victims of the drones or to more often to relatives of 
victims who were killed by the drones. Um, I, I think having them come through Rochester is really a great opportunity for the people of Rochester to learn more about about what's happening uh, and about about what's happening in our name and with our tax dollars. Um, and so I'd really urge people to uh, to come out and and support the marchers, or if if you don't agree with their positions, to come out and have some good discussions. Okay, thank you. Well, thanks. Um, as, as my friend Ed Canan has famously said, drones are tactically smart but strategically stupid. Um, in the short term, it looks like drones are a great deal for, for America because we don't have to risk uh, American troops uh, directly. We can, we can kill uh, apparently without, with impunity, without risking American lives. Um, but in, in the long run, um, drones have been shown to breed terrorism and chaos. Um, our, even our news media has covered a little bit some of the chaos into which Yemen has descended um, pretty much as a direct result of years of U.S. drone strikes that, that have uh, undermined the order in the country, uh, has led to civil war, and now has led to Saudi Arabia basically imitating the United States and deciding it can just bomb a country at will. Um, the, the whole U.S. policy, including, uh, including drone strikes, I think, has just um, created even more chaos in the Middle East. And now you have Russia deciding it can bomb another country at will. Um, unfortunately, other countries are following uh, the precedent of the United States and our claim that we can bomb either by airplanes or by drones any country that we want to. Um, and that's not leading to a more peaceful world or a more peaceful Middle East. Officially, um, what Hancock Air National Guard base has said is that the, their drones are only being used in Afghanistan. We have two organizations that are operating the drones, really. The military, who are, we are told, are only using the drones in combat zones or war zones. Um, and the CIA is operating drones in a variety of places. Um, killing people in in Somalia, in uh, in Yemen, in Pakistan, as well as in Syria and and Iraq and uh, Afghanistan. Um, so we're not we're not totally sure whether they truly abide by that those distinctions. Um, but there are numerous numerous countries where we've been using drones. Well, I mean that's that's already happened. We've had in in other countries, we've had about half a dozen American citizens who have been executed with no due process, um, and at least one of them, uh, Abdul Rahman Al Alaki, the the 16-year-old son of Anwar Al Alaki, uh, was executed um, with with no justification that that we can think of. He would. Um, sometimes I've heard U.S. representatives say he was killed in the same strike that killed his father, uh, but that's simply not true. Uh, he was killed a month later, um, and the, the White House, as far as I know, has still not never given any reason why. Um, so we, we do have that problem. Um, there is at least one police department which I believe has now received permission to uh, operate armed drones, although they say they're, they're not lethal arms so far. Um, so I, I don't think that lethally armed drones uh, are operating in the United States today, um, but seeing the expansion of the uses of drones, uh, I, I would not be surprised. I think it's certainly something to worry about. The Upstate Coalition um, really uh, was first organized about six or seven years ago, uh, bringing peace activists together from Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, Ithaca, Binghamton, Albany, um, and I probably left a few cities out, um, 
Originally, we were focused on Fort Drum, and there was a march from various points in New York uh, to Fort Drum. Um, when, about six years ago, the uh, Hancock Air National Guard base was given the drone mission, and, and um, it is the location for the 174th Attack Wing, um, which, which says a lot right there. Um, even, even the language that they're using, the Attack Wing, Hellfire missiles, Predator and Reaper drones, um, gives you the idea that there's not good intent here. Um, but when Syracuse became uh, the center for an actual drone control center, I believe it was the second military drone control center after Creech Air Force Base out near Las Vegas, um, we really came to focus on that. Um, again, realizing that in some senses the drones are the tip of the iceberg of U.S. military policy, um, exemplified so much recently by the horrendous bombing of the Doctors Without Borders Hospital and the, the killing of 22 people, including three children, um, in a hospital that was clearly marked, that had been they had been calling in their GPS location to the U.S. military for the four years that they were there. Um, you know, the idea of calling this, blithely calling this an accident, and you know, when the when the White House spokesman is on there saying saying how proudly, well, we acknowledge when we make a mistake, and we're really virtuous when we kill people accidentally. Um, it just the utter lack of of compassion, of repentance for for the horrible killings that we're doing, and 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 the. You know, the fact that by the Geneva Conventions, that was a war crime, and it should be treated as such. I think there's a good reason that Doctors Without Borders is, is calling for an independent investigation, because we know the history of the Pentagon investigating itself. Um, I'm sorry, I got a little sidetracked there, but I, I do want to make the point that the drones are one part of the larger U.S. policy. At the same time, they raise tremendous problems. They blur the distinction between war and peace. Um, they in increase the likelihood that the president will order drone strikes in countries with which we're not at war, which has already happened, because the cost is so little. Um, you're not risking, he's not risking American lives. Um, the drones are expensive, but not that expensive. And perhaps most importantly, politically, it's not very costly because if a drone gets shot down or if the mission goes awry, um, the president may not even have to ever acknowledge that it happened. Whereas if American servicemen, people's lives are lost, they would have to acknowledge that. And, and that just raises the, the likelihood that, that we'll be getting involved in another war. Another, another problem is that drones are not rocket science. Um, it, it's relatively easy even for non-state actors to develop lethal drones and you know do we really want to bequeath a world to our children where where killer drones may be flying all over the place what what happens when another country or a group decides that an American politician <clears throat> is a terrorist and decides to take action on their own following exactly the legal precedent that the United States has set. Is that really the kind of world that we want that we want to leave to our children? I, I don't think so. Uh, you know, President Obama's Kill Tuesdays when they when they decide who their targets will be for the week, I think is a very frightening development. Um, you know, and for me, the, the frightening thing is that, that this has, this program has gone on and increased, regardless of whether it's a Republican or a Democratic president. It's, I, I'm afraid, you know, going, going to the polls and voting is not going to solve this issue because we don't have uh, a major party candidate who's willing to take on the drone program. Uh, you know, and... and we need, therefore, to be taking action in the street, to be doing things like this, this peace walk. Yeah. Okay.
Well, they, the marchers are planning to leave Palmyra um, about 8 o'clock Tuesday morning, October 13th. Uh, should be arriving at Nazareth sometime in the afternoon. Um, there will be a panel at 7 o'clock uh, Tuesday night at Nazareth um, in the Forum, in, uh, in the Schultz Center, uh, where we will be trying to bring together three issues, the drones, Black Lives Matter, and the current refugee crisis in Europe, and ask the question, what do these have in common? Uh, should we think about these as totally isolated issues, or are there common roots to all of those? And, and, and should people who are concerned about one really be thinking about, about all of them? And, and so I will be on that panel, and Yakub Shabazz, who's been a community organizer in Ithaca and is a, currently a student at Nazareth College, and Russell Brown, who's a Vietnam veteran and one of the key organizers of the, the Undrone Upstate March. Okay, from Nazareth, the next morning they will march to downtown Rochester and there will be a, a movie being shown at the Flying Squirrel on Clarissa Street at 7 o'clock Wednesday. Uh, the, it's a new movie that's just come out about drones called Good Kill. Just that I've, I've known a lot of the marchers for, for many years. Some of them have spent some time in Afghanistan, have talked to to victims of the drones or to more often to relatives of victims who were killed by the drones. Um, I, I think having them come through Rochester is really a great opportunity for the people of Rochester to learn more about about what's happening uh, and about about what's happening in our name and with our tax dollars. Um, and so I'd really urge people to uh, to come out and, and support the marchers or if if you don't agree with their positions, to come out and have some good discussions. Okay. Who would Jesus find? Who would Jesus find? Who would Jesus find?